Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us tonight on episode five, season five of the standoff with Brad and Richie here on New Zealand Sport Radio. We're here live on Wednesdays throughout the season. Evening, Richie. Um, well, the Warriors finally got a win on the board, and we're now down to just two winless teams after an exciting Tigers win. First of all, how are you, and what did you think of round three? I'm very well, thanks, Brad. I am I have a few more grey hairs after the weekend. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, like you say, we got the win, so that, that's the main thing and weekend's always better after our Warriors win and yeah, the rest of the footy was enjoyable as well. How was, how was your weekend? Yeah, pretty good. Same old, um, watching all the league I can and, um, yeah, had a, had a multi as you know, through the weekend and the yep. Tigers ruined it for me, but if there's any team that's going to ruin it, I'm happy it was them. So, yep. um, yeah, I'm, we'll talk about that when we review the games. But while we're live here on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m., you can also catch our show at your convenience on iHeartRadio and Spotify and all those places. Just remember to search for New Zealand Sport Radio. As always, we're going to cover everything you need to know in the week that was Rugby League, including our top stories of the week, a review of the Round 3 matchups. Uh, we'll then stop and answer some questions from you guys as well as questions we've got for each other. We'll then preview Round 4 and tell you who we picked. Um, before ending the night with a recap of the Super League. So remember to send us comments and questions throughout the show, and we'll as we jump straight into it, Richie. Let's do it. Um, still not a lot of news, just a lot of big chunk news instead of a whole lot of little individual stories, but uh, probably the big story was Taylor May. Um, he was put on report for his hit on Walsh, um, but the match review committee um, decided the clash of heads was accidental and no further punishment was required. I thought that's where the story would end, Richie. But um, despite that decision, um, plenty in the media were talking about he should have been red carded, he should be banned for life, all this stuff. Um, and Graham Allensley, the head of football, in his weekly apology, um, came out and warned um, that any other players that make a similar tackle will likely face a judiciary um, charge and that Taylor should have been charged. So we probably know where I'm sitting on this, this fence. I do. I do. But um, <laughs> what was your take on the incident and everything afterwards, the the lack of charge, uh, the yeah. comments from head of football and all that? Um, it was, in my opinion, 100% accidental. I... I don't believe anyone charges in to head clash and put their own head in danger as well. Whether or not he should cop a charge for that, that's that's the burning question. The fact that it's Reese Walsh probably prompts uh, the NRL to come out and, and say what they did, given that he's the face of the game. Um, Paul, I'm not sure if you saw the hit. Um, I'm guessing no, but I think if you ask somebody like Paul... They'll tell you probably it should be a red card and a suspension every day of the week. If you look at it from what happens in rugby union, rugby union, he's finding a new career. <laughs> um, but finding it from from a rugby point, you, you, you just if you go in upright and put your head in the area where the other person's head is, then it's reckless at the end of the day. And if you're going to be reckless, you're going to get carded. Um, yeah. So, but no, I'm not seeing this one. But yeah, basically, you just have to get your, your head. At a different height to the other person's head, and then they won't hit each other. Pretty yeah. simple. It's, it's, Walsh, it's a Walsh is just too quick. He's just to too paint quick. A, to paint a picture for you, Paul, that's pretty much what didn't happen. He didn't lower his target. He went and fate uh, like facing Walsh and upright, and they pretty much clashed heads. I don't believe he did it intentionally, but. Um, yeah, up until now in rugby league, that's probably just deemed an accident, and that's all you hear about it. But uh, with with the way things are now, with concussions and heightened, um, well, it's more of a union thing. But with league, the attempts to reduce head contact, that's probably probably going forward. This might set the set the bar, and you might see charges going forward. Yeah, I think my issue with it is like they said, like as a defensive player, you have the duty of care, right? But then we might talk about it later. Chanel Harris Devita jumps for a ball in the air, gets taken out, and the ref and everyone said, "No, you jumped too early. That's on you." So it's 
when is the defender at, uh, like have to protect the attacking player? When do they not? That's, um, yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's fine. It was an accident. If they had banned him, I probably would grumble, but I wouldn't, you know, go out of the way. But yeah, it's I, unfortunate. Yeah, so, I mean, look, looking at it now, he rushes out the line. So he, so it's not, I mean, Reese Walsh just tips the ball on, right? So it's, Reese Walsh yep. hasn't stepped or done anything to yeah. change where he is. And the guy's running straight out of the line and runs straight into him face first. I'm and broken his eye socket. Uh, the, um, fractured it. Fractured it. Fractured it. Yeah. Yeah. The um, so yes, I, no, yeah, no, that's that's just rec- rec- if you're going to run in at that height, you're going to clash heads. I mean, it's if you run if you run face, literally run run face on face, it's going to happen. I mean, it's uh, is he deliberately going there and headbutting him? No. Um, yeah. But but you get yeah, but you've. I don't see how his head can miss the other guy's head <laughs> with that, in, a, on, in all honesty. It, it was good to see. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, so we'll see uh, what happens. Um, that's not a thing that happens every week, obviously, but be interested to see if it happens um, in the next couple of months while everyone still remembers what will happen. But um, we'll move on. So um, the Panthers, it's been rumoured that they're the first team selected to go to Vegas in 2025. There's a lot of noise. The Warriors are also locked in as well. Uh, what's your take? It seems um, very uh, logical to take the Panthers. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see if the Panthers, if they do a four-peat yeah. and they have a World Club Challenge yep. and then have to go to LA, um, Las Vegas, what that's going to look like. I think they're back to switching um, um, for that um, challenge, so it would be in Australia. Yeah, I assume, but it's still you got a big game, and then you know, a week later you're playing um, in Las Vegas. It could be quite taxing uh, for any team, I guess, that wins it. Um, and um, Simon's commented saying the Raiders going to Vegas would make a lot of sense. Yeah, especially since Las Vegas is the NFL team's called the Raiders. Um, seems like a slam dunk. We're I guess we've got to wait and see, but they do kind of need to tell everyone now, uh, like sooner rather than later for teams to prepare for what that's going to look like. Um, fans to prepare to um, go over there because it's not cheap. Yeah. Um, I'm still on the, I'd rather the Warriors stay home um, as a selfish fan that can't afford to go to Vegas. Um, and the traveling they do already. Um, I just feel it's, thing but i can understand all the fans are really excited about going um but yeah i think panthers have to be as the you know the best team of like the last five years basically yeah yeah 100 they you'd think they'd find a way to make them make them one of the teams it's uh, if it's an event you want to showcase your game it makes sense to have the best so panthers yeah why not send us <laughs> I can just see them doing that Panthers versus Warriors in Las Vegas, just Warriors, just to stick it into Warriors us, home. and it'll be a Warriors, Warriors home, home game, game too. Yeah. Yep. Um. So on that on on the Vegas thing, do you think they should be sending back one one team every year that to to try and build a fan base around that team, or do you think it's uh, should be brand new four four different teams every year? Um, I think. There was um, some of those um, idiot pundits across the ditch on one of their shows during the weeks when they came back from talking about it. They had an idea which wasn't that bad, where it was you win, you stay. So, like, the two teams that win are back the next year and they've got, like, two new challenges. And if you win, you stay on. Um, That would make sense because the Americans would understand that. You know, they don't understand a lot, to be fair. But if you understand that, the team that wins is going to come back and defend their right to be in Las Vegas the following year. They would understand that logic, but um, I don't know what the NRL's plan is. Um, and yeah, Jack O'Connor agrees with me saying no to Vegas. He wants a premiership, nothing else, and going to Vegas ain't going to help. Yeah, I think I was going to say you look at the teams that have returned, they haven't really played well, but Two of them are playing okay and two of them are playing bad. Um, so maybe it's losing in Vegas really um, 
kicks you down. So I'm, I'm not well, sure. Like, yeah, they were playing bad before, and so that's why they lost. They, <laughs> they played really well while they lost, though, in in um, Las Vegas. Oh, so where, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Like the Rabbitohs, the Rabbitohs look good in Vegas, ish, and then they're quite possibly the most embarrassing side at the moment in a competition that has the Titans and Tigers. It's amazing, isn't it? You talk about embarrassing sides, doesn't even mention the Dragons. Um, the uh... but Dragons have got to win. <laughs> so the Tigers. Um, That's true. All right, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paul just comes and steals, steals the show. And Nicholas says, who's the bloke on the right? Haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, I know. Nice to see you, mate. He, he earns too much money now. He just comes and goes when he pleases. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so anything else you want to add on Vegas before we move on? Um, no, I want to go. That's that's all okay. I need to add. Yeah. Um, Rabbitohs. Well, we might as well talk about them. So um, Jason Dimitri, um, Dimitrio, the coach, um, has faced a lot of criticism this season already um, and has stated that despite last week being the lowest point in his career, He's the right man for the job and will turn the rabbits around. Um, Not so sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, you have to say that. You, you can't just say, well, I, yeah. I, I can't do this anymore, find a new coach. But we were both pretty adamant that no one was going to get the sack. I think um, yep. he could be the first one to go if the rabbits don't turn things around. I think. I think they might might be able to get a win this week. Um, if they can't win this week, I think a lot of heads are going to um, have to roll. Um, we were talking to Ruin Hammer during the week that um, the week after this, they play the Warriors, and they love um, coming out of nowhere and beating the Warriors. But, um, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, what, what can you say? I can say... Yes, we did say before the season we didn't think any coach would be sacked, but I don't think there are too many more results, bad results away from Jason Demetrio being under in, under pressure. Um, yeah, they, they had a really bad end to last year, and I, when you add that on to what they've done so far, yeah, um, the, the comments he's made there are just sort of reinforcing the fact that He's probably probably already feeling the pressure, and and Souths are looking like a team that. I know it's early days in the season, but they're looking like a team that. Maybe the coach has lost the dressing room. I could be I could be off the mark, but they don't look like they're playing for each other or playing to any sort of plan. Well, yeah. To be honest, we talked about it a lot last year when they were in that horror run towards the end. There were already talks about him losing the locker room and. Sam Burgess leaving with his just being disgruntled about the fact that certain players in the club had special treatment and they've all come out and said there's none of that. It kind of still feels like it is that way. Um, but yeah, the only way you can silence the critics is by winning. You've got stories now coming out on podcasts from um, uh, Mansour talking about the environment. I don't know if you call that, Brad. Um, I did, yeah. How, how he was treated and by Demetrio, and that's that's um, Mansell's side of the story. You'd, you know, there's always a couple of sides to the story, but yeah, that didn't sound too great either. Yeah, but to be fair, he is a winger, and you're not meant to treat them well. Um, <laughs> they're kind of the afterthought of rugby league. Um, but, yeah, it is only one side of the story, um, and, you know, he was at the end of his run, you know, he had come there, he wasn't really delivering. So I can see the decisions to drop him in that, but the communication seems to have been the issue. But again, we weren't there. So, yeah. Um, and Jason's got more than enough things on his plate to come out and offer his side of the story for a podcast. Oh, um, yeah. You know, if he came out and did that, um, I think he, there'd be even more criticism. You know, look how bad they give Benji crap for going home and seeing family. If you've got a coach under the pump talking about gossip, then, yeah, it's it's not a good look. But, yeah, it's not. Um, we'll move on because the rabbits, it's making me depressed. Um, <laughs> the, a guy that potentially might be just waiting to be a new Rabbitohs um, coach, um, the, 
has been given a job offer from the Dolphins, and that's Wayne Bennett. So um, the Dolphins have stated they've offered Wayne Bennett a deal for life, um, which isn't that big a deal, really, let's be fair. Um, but um, <laughs> sorry. Wow. That's great taste. I'm digging a hole for him already. Yeah, well, he, he's in his 90s, come on. Um uh, yeah, he's been given a deal in all seriousness now um, where he could be involved in all aspects of the club if he chooses to take it. So they haven't really explained what the role is, but it sounds like almost a similar role to like what Gus Gould's got at the Bulldogs, you know, like an overseer. Um, so uh, if no one's offering a coaching gig, it seems like a hell of a, a thing. For an old guy like him who does not want to stop working, um, it seems like a, a, a simple layup for him. If no one is saying, come be our head coach, uh, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, we've seen that following up Wayne Bennett in the coaching sense is, is pretty tough. We're seeing it with Demetrio now. Um, you know, where, where Wayne Bennett left, left the Rabbitohs when he left, they... They were making prelims every year. Um, now they're struggling. It's 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 you know it's a tough job following up one of the greatest. So we got Christian Wolf coming on to coach with the Dolphins. So you know maybe if they have Wayne in the background there, might might not be such a bad idea, especially for a, a club so early on in their in their lifespan. So yeah, yeah and um, Paul said Wayne been at seventy four. Um, Simon says he thinks Wayne should be an honorary director of football. I think that's essentially what this role is. And uh, Nicholas made a comment about um, Latrell Mitchell. If you want to star that one, Paul, we can discuss that in the questions because um, I think we can have a bit of a thing there. And Jacko said, is there something wrong with being an old bugger? Um, I wouldn't know. I'm the youngest on here. So um, you'd have to ask the two old people. Um, but, yeah. It, uh, 74 is a if you're passionate you they say it's not a job so if he wants to keep going till he's in his 80s um full credit to him um yeah yeah just don't take my joke so seriously jacko um that's what, at the end of the day if you're still doing this at 74 it's who you are right yeah he's he's going to be doing this until until he can't walk or until he can't get out of bed um you know if, if he if he stops doing this then yeah, it's like he'll. he'll it's, it's, it's just who you are. It's what you do. Um, you, you can't yeah. stop. You don't. You don't retire from from that kind of stuff. Yeah, and Jay says I don't look the youngest. Yeah, um, yeah. It's been a tough life. Been a Warriors fan, you know. You know, Rich, 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 you, you know, we have Richie on here for the housewives anyway. Yeah, <laughs> um, and that's why the facial hair stays. I look a lot younger when I'm clean shaven. So, um, yeah, but we'll we'll move on. Um, you're going to derail me again. Um, this one is just all speculation right now, but there was a lot of noise um, the last few days about the Broncos extending Reese Walsh um, on a massive five-year deal worth $5.5 5 so like $1.1 million a year. Um, he actually came out yesterday on Instagram, and um, well, half of him, because his face is a bit big, but um, he came out and said no, no deal's been signed yet. Um, so it's kind of what's the space. 1.1, 1. 1, um, I think, to be honest, with how the salary cap and that is going, I think the Broncos are saving money in the long run. Um, if it's 1.1 1. 1 for five years, in five years' time, you know, he could be asking shitloads more money um, with how things are going. Um, so it's kind of given that now, I, I guess the issue is they're signing, they've already signed Ezra Mann to a big deal as well. Are they going to be in a bulldog situation where you've got mm. all your money um, without other players? They've still got Kerrigan, Payne Haas is still there. If he's still there when um, his contract comes up, it's another story. But um, I don't see Walsh going anywhere else. I kind of think he enjoys being the, not only the face of the NRL at the moment, but the face of the Broncos. Yep. So I think he'll sign this deal and we'll probably be talking about it next week. Yeah, and maybe that's why he hasn't come out and 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 you know they haven't announced anything official. Why maybe he want what he's wanting to squeeze those extra dollars out of it, and why not? You know, I think 
with his tra career trajectory, like you say, with the salary cap increases, he's probably he, he's right up there in terms of what he should be earning in the NRL. He probably would be one of the the highest, if not the highest, paid player, given yeah, his marketability, Jay marketability as well. Yeah, and Jacko said his contract will have add-ons if the cap increases, but Bronx must be under cap pressure. Yeah, I'm sure that they're, um, they're working all those little bits out, um, and there will be like when it goes up this percent, maybe he gets a bump of a certain percent as well. Mm. It'd have to be in there. And um, Paul's put up there in a rough salary caps, twelve point one million for your thirty best players. Um, so yeah, one one point one million of that twelve point one to one player. Um, it is a big chunk, but yeah, I guess they're looking in five years, you know, in a couple of years' time, Reynolds won't be there. Um, he will have retired by then. Um, there's a few few players, and I think they're trying to build their nucleus of the young talent they've got. That's why you saw Kirk Capewell um, wear a Warriors jersey this year, because they had Jordan Ricky and Pia Gora that they wanted to keep both. Um, so they had to lock them down. Um there's always a bit of juggling when it comes to salary cap, so we'll see, um, unless you're the Roosters. But, um, you know, it'll be interesting times for them, but I'm sure we'll probably, if it, if not next week, it'll probably be the week after we can confirm it. I'm sure they won't keep it keep it quiet for that long. But um, we'll go second to last bit before we get into signings. Uh, Leichhardt Oval, we talked about it uh, last week. Um, first of all, apologies for me saying that... Um, Tigers, it doesn't matter about the condition of the stadium because they'll never sell it out. They sold it out a few days later after I said that. So um, congratulations on that. A great crowd. But, um, yeah, with the – obviously, we talked last week. From 2025, they're not going to play NRL games there anymore due to the conditions. They had a cracker crowd on the weekend, had a good win. Got a lot of people talking about, well, come on, Leichhardt's got all this history – you don't want to just um, throw it away. So yeah, a lot of people were pressing uh, the New South Wales government about giving us some money. I think there was a quote. I can't remember who it was. It might have been the chairman or um, the CEO of the Tigers saying, you know, can't you give Leichhardt a bit of money because surely the Panthers stadium doesn't need um, gold-plated urinals or whatever for how much money that stadium's getting. Um, the government's come out and said, no, there's no money to upgrade it. Peter Volandis, though, Richie, he was actually asked if the NRL would be interested in buying the stadium. And he said if the um, government was willing to, to put it on the table to sell, they would be interested. So what do you think? Do you think the NRL should go in, buy it, and invest and upgrade it so it can be the traditional home of the Tigers as it's been? Well, from... Yeah, I mean, you would be... In Tigers fans' eyes... Yeah, that that would be a pretty heroic thing to do for the NRL. They're already looking at investing in things like Super League, so maybe it would be a sound investment if they had enough had enough there to give it its give it the refurbishments it needs. Uh, like, like we saw in the weekend, the crowd was fantastic, and um, as we'll say and uh, go over in the review, for, uh, my thoughts were kind of acted like an extra player out there for the Tigers. Um, you know, nice full stadium, very, very loud and, and boisterous. Maybe, maybe the fact that they've said no games will be played there twenty five onwards. Maybe that's why they got such a good crowd because it's not the results. Yeah, I um, mean, Simon said uh, as a bit of an insight, the stadium issue in New South Wales and Sydney is very much political. Yeah, one of the um, shows in Australia actually talked about that. Um, the I don't know if he's still the prime minister or if whoever the like the prime minister person um i think it's him his like electorate is that area so he's kind of guaranteed to stay in um if he's not prime minister he stays in his opposition so they don't need to kind of tell the locals we'll updo the stadium because he's always going to win that area um that was a, a story they said but i barely understand politics in this country let alone another one so I don't know. But, yeah, if the NRL own it, they get a bit of control over the stadium too. Um, I think they would be then asking the Tigers more. Like I think, um, yeah, and Simon said, from his knowledge, the current Prime Minister of Australia is a South Sydney Rabbitohs fan. Yeah. Poor bugger. Probably not anymore. Um, 
Yeah, Anthony Albanese, yeah. From what I understand, he, I think he lives in that catchment area where the stadium is and they're saying, like, his his voters don't need to be, um, like, encouraged to vote for him because they're going to do the stadium up or something like that. And yeah, Jack, I said, a bit like Carlo Park, I guess, time to move on. It could be that as well. Um, yeah, I don't have the investment in that stadium because I'm not from there. But it's the same as if they said Mount Smart um, isn't up to scratch anymore. We're not playing there anymore. Um, I would be a bit more emotional about, no, you can't leave. Um, you know, but that's just because we know they'd send us to Eden Park and I'd rather die. Um, you know, but... You're very, you're very morbid tonight. I am. I am. Sorry. Um, I just don't like that saying. So I get it. It's like a smaller crowd. You get big crowds in there it makes a great atmosphere which we saw in the weekend yeah um so it will be interesting that's not something that's going to happen anytime soon i think if they were in the um position to buy it it would take a while um for that kind of discussion um but yeah i thought it was an interesting thing. and last bit of news it's very little um this round for the warriors is their um, member appreciation round um, so I got an email today saying like what they're doing. Um, I think at three thirty on Sunday, um, Lily World, which is the little bar next to the stadium, is booked out for members only. So if you're a member, go down. I think they got, I think at half time they're doing a prize for members where the winner gets to go to the last game in Australia and all that stuff. So if you're a member, get down early. Um, and enjoy it it means i'm probably have to, gonna have to go early richie uh, to go and try to win some prizes so yeah um yeah i just thought i'd mention that to anyone um watching that's a, a warriors member make sure you go down and enjoy the little extras they're putting on um we'll move on um to signings i got one richie yeah uh taylor may we, we already talked about him with his um beautiful tackling technique He's been signed until the end of 2026 by the Panthers, so they're keeping him around. So that dream for Terrell May at the the Roosters wanting to play with all his brothers, unless he jumps and goes to Panthers, it's going to be a little bit longer. He'll sign with Panthers now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's it. That's the only signing I have. We've got a bigger one, though. We've got injuries. Um, round three, I think, is going to be known for quite a while. Um for the, the, the time where everyone got injured. Um, I was writing them all down, as I know, uh, as you know, I do for our show. And then Bloke and Abar did a picture, which I haven't given um, Richie, oh, I haven't given Paul, but I'll just go through everybody because otherwise we'll be here all night. Um, Mitch Moses got a, from the Eels, got a foot fracture. That's around eight weeks. Reese Walsh with the face fracture. That's four to six. There was news today that... Um, He's not going to need surgery, so it's probably going to be closer to the four. Um, then Nathan Cleary is out two to four weeks with a hamstring. Lindsay Collins, two to four weeks with a hamstring. Scott Sorensen, three to four weeks with a knee. Bryce Cartwright, six to eight weeks with ribs. Um, Toby, uh, Toby Rudolph, four weeks with his foot. Dal nugan has got a week off with a concussion. So is Tane Torbicki. Um, Big Tino. From the Titans, ACL is done for the year. That's a big one. Um, Ruben Cotter, one to two weeks with an ankle. Cameron Murray limped off training. No word on it, what's going to happen with him. Um, Brendan Piacora limped off at training, is not playing this week. Not sure how long that's going to be. Um, and then Sandow Smith, three to six weeks with an elbow. And a later one uh, today, Albert Hopawati from the Raiders is out I think two weeks because he got a burn on his arm from an exploding canister in the backyard. Um, yeah, there you go. I gave it to all, it all to you, mate. Go. What do you reckon? Um, there's some big boppers in there gone. There's a lot. That's what I reckon. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> I was kind of looking at them. Um, a couple of days ago on or yesterday after team naming tuesday thinking well how, how's this going to affect my tips and then you look at them and a couple, couple of teams have a couple of big ones out but the team they're playing has a couple of big ones out so it's yeah i don't know that's just a lot and a lot of big names too cleary moses um big tino is probably the 
the biggest one, given it's a, a season-ending injury and how, how bad the Titans are going. So, yeah, they're so really going to feel... Gonna so really close to getting that. David Fafita back and they lose Tino. It's, you know... Yeah. And he's probably the bigger loss than getting oh, Fafita Oh, 100%. Back. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, like, out of all of them, Cleary is the least, I think. He's the biggest well, player in the game, but the Panthers are showing they can... They cover they it can, so well. Help, but, um, like, Reese. They, they, they bring in Brad Schneider, and you know what? I reckon he'll do a really good job. Yeah, well, I thought Brad Schneider did really well given his chances at the Raiders as well. Yeah. Um, so I think he'll do all right. But yeah, um, yeah, Tino's biggest loss, Moses Walsh, I think will really affect how their teams play. Um, Bryce Cairo has been playing really well for the Eels too. So losing him's um, yeah. big. Um, yeah, a lot of big boppers there. Um and Robbie's in talking about fantasy. Um, my fantasy team took a massive hit this week um, with this, so I'm, I'm not happy. But, yeah, hopefully everyone gets back sooner rather than later. Um, but on the positive side as Warriors fans, um, we got a couple back um, already. So um, hopefully we uh, keep our casualty ward down. But um, we'll move on. Naughty boys, we've got one, man. Um, Leo Thompson. He got a great do dangerous contact and a one match ban for the same tackle that happened to Chanel yeah. Harris to be there and got no That's, penalty. Yeah, exactly right. If he gets a ban, then we should have a Raider on this list as well because um, who it was Rapana, wasn't it? Uh, Rapana did it to Chanel, but Leo no, did it to Pat. No difference whatsoever. The only difference is the landing. One one happened to a Warriors player. Right, and the landing because Ryan almost landed on his head where Chanel um, landed on his back. But yeah, it was still a dangerous position. Still but yeah, should, still should have been a penalty. One was reckless from the defender, and one was reckless from the attacker in the eyes of the referees. It really wasn't reckless from the attacker. Chanel jumped for the ball. How do you call that jumping early? He caught the ball but got tipped. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, but, I, I digress. I'm still angry about that one. But, yeah, it's unfortunate for Leo. I'm a big fan of him. Um, but, yeah, at least it's only one week and wasn't something crazy because he was looking at the ball as well. Um, he's just yeah. a prop, so he can't jump. Um, so, you know, um, it is what it is. But we'll move on. That was all the news. Um, and, we, you know, we're doing bumper time. We'll go on to the game, starting with uh, the grand final rematch, Richie. Panthers mm. 34 beating the Broncos 12. Yeah, I mean, I, I always love it when that happens. Uh, six tries to two. Sunia Taruva, Isaac Tungle with two. Mitch Kenny and Brian Toto with two. Just the two tries for the Broncos, Dean Mariner and Jesse Arthurs. Yeah, I thought the Panthers were clinical once again. It's the cliche we say every week when the Panthers win, really. But um, they were against a, a weakened Broncos side, but they didn't take them lightly, and they just dominated a the contest. They punished the Broncos down the edges, um, and look so dangerous. As we just mentioned, they're losing Cleary for the next month, and it is a big hit, but they always find a way to win. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was very impressive. Uh, your thoughts on the Panthers? Yeah, I thought they were they were, they were very good, a uh, really good performance by the, by the Panthers. Many of their usual suspects having good games. I, I mean, it's no secret this team is probably going to be there or thereabouts again this year. So uh, for me, no real surprise they comfortably accounted for a Broncos team who was their lineup was weakened. Um, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. And your thoughts on that uh, that Broncos side? Um, I thought they were easily outclassed, but um, it's hard to read too much into what it means given the reshuffling the Broncos had to do with their lineup. Uh, any team's going to struggle without three of their best players. Um, I thought, it, you know, at least they didn't give up because they they were down pretty heavily and they they kept trying and ended up picking a picking up a couple of second half tries themselves. So good on them for hanging in there, even though they were they took a bit, bit of a beating. Yeah, this match was always going to be tough for them without Reynolds and Payne Haas, uh, but then losing Walsh in the first five minutes um, just really saw the Broncos underpowered. Um, I did think they did their best, like you said. Um, they just lack some oomph up the middle in direction on attack. Um, it could be a few. It could be an interesting few weeks um, with some of those stars out. 
Um, Because I don't know, I can't, I'm not as confident in the Broncos replacing those players as I am with the Panthers. Um, And yeah, Paul said the Panthers led on just about every stat except kick penalty, kick meters and penalties. And yeah, like you said, the the Broncos had a little bit of fight at the end. They uh, they stopped the Panthers scoring um, in the 50th minute, scored two tries themselves. Um, But yeah, just too little too late. Your player to stand out. Uh, there was one really obvious one, so I stayed clear from him. Um, I wanted to show Brian Tor some love. I think he does massive amounts of running meters and post-contact meters every week. No different here. Um, and he picked up a couple of tries, so I, there were a number of players he could have picked, but yeah, I'm just a really big fan of Tor, and he, he went well. And Paul said Brian Tor led on fantasy points, which is probably just... Uh expose richard for how he picks his player he probably just goes to fantasy and picks the top one i don't do um, fantasy mate my only nrl fantasy is the warriors winning the premiership <laughs> um i went with nathan cleary um i thought he was great you know he, he went off with that hamstring towards him but you know what he was directly play well um just yeah going out both sides just fantastic player as we expect one of the best players in the comp to be yeah. Uh, move on to the next game, Friday. Uh, Warriors defeating the Raiders 18-10. Yeah, this was the stressful one. Um, th- three tries to two for the Warriors, Adam Fenua Blake. I don't know why I don't get on him first try scorer more often. Oh. I really need to. Um, Luke Metcalf and Roger, Roger Big Roger, Tui Vasashek. Um, two tries for the Raiders, Matt Timoko and Nick Kotrich. All right, before I go into my Warriors point, sorry, segue time by Brad. Um, I thought I had Adam Fenor Blake as first try, try scorer. Got you all thought. excited, I thought. Went on oh. to my T, TAB app to see how much money I had just won and saw it was sitting in the waiting to be placed still. Oh, no. I hadn't hit enter and then... Rookie yeah. mistake. <laughs> Rookie mistake, yeah, very upset um, at myself and... Um, yeah, yeah, do Okay, that's it. That's done. Um, but yeah, he's always a shout, isn't he? It sounds um, like what I did with my tips this week, Brad. <laughs> For- forgot yeah, to we'll... submit them. <laughs> yeah, so um, back to the game. I personally, I said in my review that I wrote this week, I thought this was the Warriors' worst performance this season. Um, so Murphy's Law, the worst one is the one that you win. Um, they had a lot of errors and missed opportunities that had me pulling my hair out in this very chair where I was watching the game. Um, but they dug deep and they had a lot of defensive pressure um, that they put on the Raiders in that final 20 when we kind of, as after we saw last week's game, we were like, oh no, the Raiders are going to do a storm on us here. And um, the pressure they put on for some mistakes, which kept them uh, around. But yeah, hopefully... Um, they get to start to string a few wins together after this and see the Warriors climb the ladder. And yet, mm. Paul's put up the the error set. Warriors had 13 to the Raiders 9. It's the first time this year the Warriors have hit double digits in errors. Um, and yeah, just a few missed opportunities, you know, a few tries that went begging and things like that. It, but it's also a team that didn't have a lot of their big names as well. That They've been doing very well, um, I think, we're getting Murata back. CNK is going to be back in a few weeks um, and all that. I think you're going to start seeing that all everything work together again. So as much as it's the worst performance, I wasn't upset because they won. Um, but your thoughts on the Warriors? Yeah, very similar to you. I wasn't always pretty, but I'm, I'm really happy the boys were able to find a way and, and win, albeit win ugly. Uh, the win is all that mattered here. Definitely our least spectacular game so far, but the result is what mattered most, like I just said. So hopefully this result is a springboard for us going forward and, and we can build momentum off of it. Yeah, and your thoughts on the Raiders? I actually thought they were really good in bringing what they normally do, turning it into a bit of a dogfight where you have to fight tooth and nail for the two points. And yeah, they made it really hard for us, so... Um, I think they're going to do that to a lot of teams this year. and They're never going to be a guaranteed guaranteed two points. Yeah, I kind of got the same. I thought they were gritty again, which has kind of been a trend um, the first three rounds for them. Uh, but they also made a lot of errors 
nine, um, as Paul said. Um, but, yeah, I think they've definitely proved out as wrong so far this year. Um, it just looked like they were rushing things at the end, like they were pushing things they shouldn't because they were desperate to get the points on the board quickly and um, yeah. to try to come back. Um, where if, I think if they had just gone through the motions of it and got to the ball to guys like Matt Tomoko, um, who were troubling the Warriors' um, defence, I think they could have done uh, a little bit more. But it's not a game, I think, Raiders fans, um, well, we've got one in watching in Simon. I don't know if it's a game you would go home real upset about. Kind of similar to what the Warriors were in the first two weeks. We were like, ah, they, uh, they didn't win, but, man, they were, they were in the fight. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that from them um, as the season goes on. Um, your player to stand out. Yeah, so you talked about the defensive pressure we put on the Raiders to to make life hard for them at the end. A lot of the time, the guy that leads that when he's on the field, Mitch Barnett, and I just thought he had a big game, a lot of a lot of effort moments in games like this where it's tight and stressful. People like him and Tohu, guys like that, leaders of the pack, that they make all the world a difference. So. Um, Special mention to Rocco Berry because I've been a massive fan. He did have one where people thought maybe he didn't pass to D- to Dallin on the wing. I thought Dallin was covered, in my opinion. But yeah, I went Mitch. I think it was this kind of game for the for the uh, workhorses in the pack. Yeah, Mitch. Mitch always gets overlooked, I think, because you know guys like Adam and that. And that's why I've gone with Tohu Harris for a similar reason. I picked Tohu as my um, player of the game in my review. Um, Paul said he got 63 fantasy points. Um, That's great. I didn't see that. But um, in my review, I said Tohu, it's a bit Simon Mannering-like where Mm, you know what you're going to get out of Tohu every week. So what he does is excellent. But because you're used to it, you don't, you don't congratulate him on it as much as you would if, say, we'll talk Rocco since you mentioned Rocco. Say Rocco had like a out of the blue amazing game. You go with him, but Tohu's consistently always there and thereabouts. So I went with him just because I feel like I neglect him a lot because I just expect him to do what he did in this game. I, I think he led with tackles. He played the whole eighty, um, which some guys younger than him. Uh, playing 10 minutes because of their age, apparently, um, at the Cowboys. So the fact that at his age, he's still out there doing everything. Um, yeah, I don't thought know it was fantastic. He it. He's a yeah. machine. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, fantastic game. Great great to be on the board. Well, not a fantastic game, but fantastic to get the win. Um, but we'll move on to the last game on Friday. Um, we talked about them a lot already, but the Roosters defeating the Rabbitohs 48-6. Yep, and that's why we're talking about them. Um, eight tries to one uh, for the Roosters. Dom Young, Sam Walker with two. Joey Manu, Connor, well, Joey Manu had two. Connor Watson and James Tedesco had two. Only the one try for the Rabbitohs, Jacob Host. Not much of a yeah. rivalry, is it? No. <laughs> um, I'm a bit embarrassed that I said this should have been the uh, the clash in Vegas because of the rivalry. If this had happened, I don't think they would have wanted them to come back. But, um, yeah, strong showing for the Roosters here. Um, they were attacking at will um, with the backs causing plenty of issues for South. The pack was a nightmare too. They dominated the middle of the pitch. Um, a great bounce back here, I think, so far for the, the Roosters after last season. Oh, yeah. um, and I think they do look to be real contenders this year. Um, your thoughts on the Roosters, um, since they're your second favourite team. Oh, yeah, this game was great viewing if you're a Roosters fan. Um, they really came to play and completely out, outclassed the old foe. Most of their strike weapons aiming up and producing. Um, people like Dom Young, Tedesco. Tedesco's been really good. after He faced a lot of criticism last year. Um, Victor, Victor Radley, you, you can't really single anybody out because they're all going well, so... Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. They're traveling really well. <laughs> I'm asking you about your opinions on the Rabbitohs once again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought it was another pretty shambolic outing. It's probably the best way to describe this game for them. Um, they just aren't nailing the fundamentals, which is the most alarming thing for them. I don't know what they need to do to dig themselves out of this hole, but yeah, it needs to happen pretty fast. Otherwise, they're 
they're going to be gone from the comp pretty early. Yeah, well, it, I, I said it during the game to you and Ruin Hammer. I said it's clear that Lockley and um, Elias isn't the uh, the problem itself. Um, but to be brutally honest, it looked like they, they couldn't care less. Um, Paul's brought up the error stats. I've got it in here as well. The Rabbit though, has made 15 errors. Bruce has also made 10, which 10 errors against the Rabbitohs, you would be in trouble normally. Um, but yeah, they lost the middle, couldn't defend if their lives depended on it. Um, the senior players need to pull it together, otherwise the season's going to be over sooner rather than later. And um, there's one of those senior players which Nicholas asked about, which we'll talk about in our question segment, that I think a lot of this is falling on, or should fall on. But um, your player to stand out? Um I went Teddy. There were other obvious candidates. Um, Dom Young was out of this world, to be fair. Um, I just really like Teddy for the resurgence. You know, we were really critical of him last year, and rightfully so, but he's looking like he's back to the old Teddy with maybe even a couple more layers to him, ball-playing-wise. So um, it's probably a big reason why they're travelling so well. Yeah, he, he's been great this year, and I think it's because he must have been watching Ruin Hammer's prediction show where I said he'd get dropped out of New South Wales because he's yeah. past his prime, and he wants to prove me wrong. Um, but, yeah, he was fantastic. But I went with Dom Young. You know, Dom, he only got one try in this game, but he was just a monster whenever you got him the ball. Um, mm. Kind of what I thought would happen due to how well he was at Newcastle last year where he, he finally seems to have hit the ground running in the NRL. Um, and yeah, just in a, a big bopper out on that edge, um, causing all sorts of problems. And I kind of That's felt nice. you would cheat and go with Teddy. So, um, well, I, I, yeah, I could quite easily have gone with Dom Young because, like I say, he, he was he was outstanding. Not just the try, a couple of try assists and and line yeah. breaks. He just looks oh, absolute weapon. Yeah, next game uh, on first game on Saturday, Bulldogs defeating the Titans thirty two nil. Yeah, shamefully, I tipped the Titans here. Um, <laughs> six tries to, to zero. Um, yeah. J- Jacob Preston, Viliami Kakao, Reed Mani, Jacob Carez, Connor Tracy, and Blake Taff. Six try scorers to zero. Yeah, so the Bulldogs made the most of their opportunity against one of the cellar dwellers um, and looked good. There was nothing flashy by any means, but they did the basics well. Um, and big efforts from um, Kakao, Curran, and Connor Tracy – allow them to cruise to victory. Um, perhaps this well-timed confidence booster could help them avoid the bottom four and cause some headaches for those middle field teams. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, it was a great game out of them. You know, they've kind of been itching to try to get a win on the board as well. Um, and, yeah, Jacko said Gus has finally bought a good win. Yeah, um, it's, it's nothing to go home yet because it was the Titans. Um but at the moment, the Bulldogs are down in that level. So, you know, you want to be beating those teams that are around you um, so you can get away from them. So I thought it was good. Yeah, ru- ruined my, um, my my preseason prediction as to who was going to get sacked first as well. This kind yeah. of result. True. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, um, and, yeah, so your thoughts on the Doggies? Yeah, I thought I thought finally it's a nice big win for the Dogs. Probably the best they've looked in quite some time. Their, their next goal has got to be to back it up and produce this kind of effort more frequently before we start getting too excited about them. Like you said, Brad, it is, you've got to put into context who they're up against. And yeah, the Titans haven't been much chop this year and probably going to get worse without Tino. So yeah, but all that said, uh, I thought the dogs looked really good. Yeah, and now you kind of already said it, but your thoughts on the Titans? <laughs> Much like Souths, not not great viewing at the moment for Titans fans. Losing Tino for the season, just another dagger in what's already been a pretty bleak start to 24. I reckon they're probably firming as a new spoon favourite for me. I don't know about you, but they've got to be right up there. Yeah, it certainly looks that way, unfortunately, as a as a as the regular Dragons hater here. Um, but, yeah, if there was a team competing with Rabbits for the most embarrassing to watch this year, it is the Titans. Um, they're just um, not a great side, putting it bluntly. Um, and they got shown up here. Um, the pack was bullied. The, 
the backs barely made a dent, and the Lusitino has effectively ended their campaign. Um, Des Hasler's got a lot of work to do. Um, and yeah, part of, uh, I'll say, in their defense, part of the pack getting bullied was Tino going off. Um, he is like the, the, the heart and soul yeah. of that forward pack. So, yeah. Um, tough yeah. times. Your player to stand out. I went, speaking of heart and soul players, um, I went with Jacob Carras, <laughs> uh, as Paul just put there, to top the fantasy points. I swear I'm not picking them up. That's not my criteria. <laughs> but no, he just, he was outstanding. He's, he is a heart and soul player for the, for the dogs. And, you know, he's been a fan favorite for, for them the past couple of years and some pretty tough times. So uh, nice to see him have a big game here. We might have to have a meeting, Paul, about Richie and his um, not not actually watching the games and just going to fantasy and <laughs> and getting his opinion from there. Um, my player, I don't know where he went in the fantasy, but I went with Kakao. Um, I thought he, he was back to um, his attacking best that we were used to seeing at Penrith. Um, you know, got a nice try. He was always asking questions. Um, kind of good to see him playing with that confidence again. And we just got to see if that's a week in week out thing with him now and this wasn't just a a one-off um but yeah very happy for the dogs um even yeah. happier about this one though second game on saturday the cowboys defeating the dragons 46 24. uh yeah and it was eight tries to four for the uh for the home team the dragons zach lomax got two uh tyrell sloan and kyle flanagan the coach's son uh they were the the Four tries for the Dragons. For the Cowboys, eight try scorers. Uh, Murray Talangi, Sam McIntyre, Griffin Neems, Scotty Drinkwater, uh, Finney Fuyaki, Tom Dearden, Val Holmes, and the Chad, Chad Townsend. Yeah. Um, I've got a bit about the Dragons, but I'll wait till my segment there about some bullying that was going on during the weekend. But Cowboys um, look to be in a tight tussle. Um, for the first 40 minutes, but they kept plugging away and making the most of their opportunities with some nice attacking plays and stern defence. Um, the only undefeated team left in the competition, which I would say is a surprise. Um, I don't know anyone had this on their bingo card, that Cowboys would be the last ones. But um, they've had a great year so far. Very impressed um, with how, how they've gone and their turnaround from what was a disappointing season last year. Hmm. Um no, I don't know that I would have said that they would be the um, only undefeated, undefeated, team. Le- undefeated team left at this stage, but I did I did pick preseason they'd be in the eight and would have a bounce back year. Um, this game in particular, not the ideal start. I feel like the Dragons were all over them, like uh, in the early going. Um, but there was a turning point in the match. Uh, Raymond Faitala Mariner bombing a certain try uh, for the Dragons. And that really turned the momentum, and the Cowboys never looked back, and yeah. really hammered home, really hammered home the advantage. Yeah, and your thoughts on the Dragons? <laughs> I thought they were looking really great right up until that moment, actually, where Fatala Mariner bombed that try. That would have given them a huge lead. Um, yeah, they did. They just really didn't look the same from that moment onwards. It's almost like they lay down, and and the Cowboys just did what they did. Yeah, before I talk about the Dragons, Jacko said the Cowboys still leaking points and have had three easy sort of games. Yeah, I think if there's any concern with the Cowboys, it's the points conceded that they're getting. Um, they are, like, they're still, you know, you're scoring 40, but you conceded 20. Um, mm. But, yeah, that that's something that can be worked on, I'm sure. But the Dragons, so before I go on about them, they did look, they looked ready for an upset with a strong start. Um, I know three individuals that were hounding me, dare I say harassing me, in that first 20 minutes. I was getting nothing but messages about how great the Dragons were going, um, which was great. And then, like you said, there was that error, and they kind of ran out of puff. Um, And then they kept making errors. Every time they looked like they were on the verge of trying to get back into the game, they'd make another error. And um, they just appear to be a team that struggles when the pressure's put on. Um, and it's another coach with a huge to-do list. Yeah. Um, and we both picked the same guy, I believe. Yeah, Val. for our player, Valentine Val. Holmes. Yeah, special player. It's just 
<laughs> he, he was a beast out there, but he's got those games in them. I think the game before was it was it the week before where he had a not his best moment. Yeah, against the Knights, and he his yeah. goal kicking was all over the place and was making errors, but um, then he produces games like this, and he's he just looks amazing. Yeah, and um, before I talk about him, um, Paul's put up, yeah, Cowboys have 62 points against. The only other team in the top 12 over 60 out of Sea Eagles was 66. Yeah, so that's that's a lot. You know, you're averaging 20, 20 plus what? Um, how many was it again, sorry? Um, 62, I can't do the math that well. Like just 20, 20 and a little bit point something. Yeah. Um, games and yeah valentine holmes topped the fantasy points that's why i picked him i didn't even watch the game richie i just looked at fantasy <laughs> i said, oh, you were watching the game i was the val one you. <laughs> yeah but um yeah val he was you know seven out of eight at the boot um which is good um just always attacking being there ready to go um mm. he's just another one that seems to have got some self-confidence back which i think a lot of those cowboys needed um after last yeah. year um, just then, so hard. Yeah. Uh, final game on Saturday. Um, the multi breaker. The Tigers defeating the Sharks thirty two to six. Yeah, I don't think many people saw that coming. Um, five tries to one uh, for the home team. Isaiah Papali'i, Alex Seifarth, just Jazzy Olam. He, he picks up his first Tigers try, and two for Jareem the Dream Buller. One try for the Sharks. Tommy Hazelton loves a try. Tommy, yeah, he does. Tommy. Uh, before we go on, Paul interrupted us again with stats. Um, Cowboys are the only team. Stats. Stats. I have to. No, I have to. It's my it's my compulsion. I see it. I have to say it. Uh, Cowboys are the only team to have scored 90 points, over 90 points with 110. Um, so, yep, sorry, Tigers. Upset of the round, 100%, I believe. Um, but the Tigers look good here. This wasn't a fluky um, upset. Um, in front of an amazing crowd, which we already talked about. They just turned up for each other. Um, the forwards were churning through the work, and the backs looked dangerous. Olam, you, you said he got that try. He looked fantastic in his first match of the club. Um, and it was just a great performance from the often mocked club, admittedly mocked on there too. Um, I'm not sure if they can back it up, um, but I have my fingers crossed for them. Um, I love seeing them play well, as long as it's, it's the Warriors. Uh, I actually, before I give it to you, I had a pop-up on Facebook like five years ago, your memories. It was a match against the Tigers that we lost, and I did a review on it. I didn't read it. It's like five years ago around this time we, we lost the Tigers. Um, but, yeah, your thoughts on the Tigers? I get a lot of memories of Warriors losses pop up on my <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Just reliving it again is tough. Um, yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable performance from the Tigers. Against the side who are running hot too, not not just anybody. The Sharks were going really well up until this point. Um, I'll wait to see how they back it up. Yeah. I did see them put 66 points on the Cowboys last year, only to still finish last. So um, mm. it'll be great for the Tigers if, if this is not just a one-off and then Benji's got them up for more performances like this. I, I, I hope that's the case. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and your thoughts on the Sharks? Definitely not the Sharks or Nico Hines' finest moment. Once the chips were down, the loud Leichhardt Oval must have felt like a extra Tigers player on the field. And it looked like the Sharks were feeling the pressure. And, and yeah, I, they just were no match for the Tigers here. Yeah, I think the Sharks, they got a massive wake-up call here. Um, I'm not sure if they came into this match cocky and underestimated Wes. Um but by the time they realized they were in a fight, it was too late. And they just couldn't get out of the hole they dug. As you said, they they were error prone. Um, they made 16 errors in this. Um, and their stars like Hines just didn't deliver. Uh, a real big bounce back is needed this week. Hmm. Um, yep. And we did go with different players on this one. Um, I'm not sure what fantasy said, but um, who did you pick? I went Olam. Uh, it's just nice to see someone like Olam who... You know, it was one of the best centers in the game at the Storm. And then he really fell out of favor last year. And um, <laughs> yeah, see, 
Brad's play a top fantasy this time around. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought I was really happy for Olam, and I think if he can keep up that kind of form, he can he can be a big difference maker for the Tigers because they've they've really been lacking in uh, particularly out out wide on the edges over the past few years. So someone like him, if if he's in top form, can really make a difference for them. He just yeah. Before I go on to the the correct answer. Um, yeah, he just looked happy out there. Is a, is yeah. probably the easiest way. He looks happy to be in first grade again and running around. And yeah, he'll make a huge difference for them. He, he's a fantastic player. But um, I went with Upi Carousel, who topped the fantasy points. Um, and how could he not? He was. It's the it's ge- best game I've seen him play in years. Oh yeah. Um, they had, and then naturally after he played as well as he did, they have to give us the fairy tale story. Um, he was chronically ill before that game and probably shouldn't have been out there. He had gastro. Yeah, and, he had the gastro, yeah. Yeah, and then he still went out there and um, delivered. And it's just good to see, um, you know, their captain be out there giving it 100% and everyone back him up, which I, that's probably the key difference between them and the Rabbits right now. The Rabbits aren't mm-hmm. playing as a team. The Tigers, as bad as they've been, are getting together and trying to do it. And... Um, the part-time coach is 50 percent so um that, that's <laughs> yeah. a good effort um I'm, I'm happy for him there so yeah fantastic game very happy for the tigers um move on we've got two games on sunday first game eels defeating seagulls 28 24. yeah and this was a really good game as well um five tries to four the home team the eels uh we had will Penasini, mitch moses Blaze Talangi on de- debut, mm. Morgan Harper, Morgan Harper and uh, Kalma Tualangi. They were the try scorers for the Sea Eagles. Tom Travoyevich, Tom Travoyevich Jason, Jackson Polo, Ruben Garrick, and Corey Waddell were the four try scorers. Yeah, I thought this was an entertaining match. Um, the Eels looked dangerous on attack. Um, they had a few laps on defence that almost cost them this contest. Um, Blaze, as you said. Um, looked fantastic, definitely a great talent for the future. And the usual suspects of Mitch Moses and Gutho directed the team around. Um, will be interesting to see how this team is going to cope um, with Mitch Moses out, um, as that could make or break them, especially with Bryce mm-hmm. Cartwright out too. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a it was a game I got right, but it was the game I didn't bet on in my multi because I wasn't sure. And it was going either way for quite some time. But yeah, mm. well done to the Eels. Um, your thoughts on Parramatta? Yeah, well, I got it wrong. I backed Manly. Of course you so, did. A little annoying. Um, but yeah, re- good result for the Eels. Um, Manly started really fast out of the gates, but uh, credit where due, the, the Eels stayed in the fight. They flipped a switch and went to their offload game, and they were throwing a lot of offloads. Mm. Um, kind of changed the momentum, and once they, once the Eels got the momentum, they, you know, they had enough in the tank to finish over the top of a game. Manly, they were very game. They were up for it, but yeah, I just thought it was a, it was a really entertaining match. Yeah, and your thoughts on Manly? Oh, so like I already, like I just said, awesome start. I kind of thought maybe we might be looking at a bit of a hiding for for a while there, but um, yeah, they'll be filthy with themselves. They let the eels wrestle momentum. They can probably feel slightly aggrieved with an obstruction call to rule out a try. Um, oh, yeah, but you know, I mean, looking at it, there's a bit of a dodgy pass in there as well. But um, I thought they looked really good in stages of this match. Probably just their defense letting them down. Um, you know, they the eels are a good attacking side, but yeah, they they leaked a, a few too many points, um, especially when they were on top by quite a bit. So they'll they want to shore that up. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I thought Manly looked good in defeat. They were in this contest, but a little. I think it was a little uh, mental lapse at the end of the first half, beginning of the second, um, kind of put them on the back foot. Uh, but they look strong in defeat. I'll give them that, and they'll continue to be a tough team to defeat this year. Um, so yeah, disappointing, but I, I think there's a lot a lot to take out of that game positively for them. Um, we picked the same guy, um, the flat track bully, um, Mitch Moses. Um, I, I think he's I think he's he, a he, flat track bully now. He's just a good player, isn't he? Yeah, Nico Hines has kind of taken that spot, and yeah, Mitch Moses top fantasy points. Um, so 
we, we're noticing a trend here. Um, but yeah, I thought he was great. He, he was, he got a nice try. He was directing play well as you expect him to. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's why I've got a bit of question marks around them without him because he adds so much to their game. Yeah, they're going to feel that loss. I think that's a, that's a huge loss. But um, yeah, I agree. He was he was really good, um, becoming a real important player for them. And if he's selected for New South Wales to partner with Calerio, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be unhappy whatsoever. I think it's probably be more dangerous than yep. uh, Cleary Cleary Lua. Yeah, definitely. And that takes us to the final game: uh, the Knights defeating the Storm fourteen twelve. Uh, yeah, two tries apiece uh, for the Knights, Dane Gagai and Inari Tuala. For the Storm, uh, Lil Puppy, Ryan Puppenhausen keeps scoring. And Tyron Wishart got a nice try there as well towards the end. Yeah. Um, this was the other game I got wrong um, out of the two. And I knew I was going to get it wrong. We even said it on the show that this, the Storm shouldn't win. So yeah. I don't know why I picked them. But um, yeah, you, the Knights look far off. No, it was close. Uh, the yeah. Knights looked good in the first half, um, but just can, didn't keep up that intensity in the second half, leaving the door open for a Storm comeback. However, they showed some defensive toughness to hold the Storm out in the final five minutes. Those backs, they got a deadly, um, though, even without Dom Young. Um, so they had me worried this week um, as they come over here. But your thoughts on the Knights? I'm always worried in game week for the Warriors. It's just, <laughs> it's just natural. Uh, but this is a big result for the Knights, who were, let's face it, they were desperate for a result, kind of like we were. Uh, they still aren't as convincing as the team they were late last year, for me. Um, mm. When you look at the game, the Storm were down on, on some big troops, so um, I still need to see a bit more out of the Knights uh, before before I'm convinced. Yeah. Yeah, and your thoughts on the Storm? I, I wish this result was... For the storm was what one that happened, you know, in the game last week. It would have been better, um, rather than rather than um, them doing what they did to us. But um, probably too many names missing here. Uh, but they made far too many costly errors, and yeah, you make that many errors, and without your big game players, you, you probably won't come out with a result. Although they were close, probably yeah. closer than they should have been. Yeah, I thought the Storm looked good here despite missing a lot of their big guns and they almost repeated their heroics from round two. They made a lot of errors, as you said. They lacked direction without either of their regular halves, but Poppenhausen um, stepped up and looked dangerous. Um, they'll be counting down um, the days until they got their full-strength team back, though. But, yeah, they, they were close. Uh, it would have been crazy if they had done what they did to the Warriors, to the Knights, and had two back-to-back -back games with, like, heroic comebacks. But, yeah, it wasn't to be here. Um, we did pick the same player here. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have been top of fantasy because it's a little bit left field um, in That's terms of fantasy field. numbers. Yep. But uh, who yep. do we K KPP. Kai Paul Pierce. Uh, Kai Pierce Paul. <laughs> okay. So Kai, Kai Pierce Paul was the best in fantasy for the Knights. So, okay. Crap. Yeah. But yeah, he looked fantastic. He's taken like a duck to water from Super League to NRL, I think. Yeah, he is. Just looks big and athletic and just something different yeah. for their pack. Um, yeah, just it uh, just shows we watch the game properly, I think, Brad, that the fact that we're yeah. picking the... We're right on the money here, yeah. We are, yeah. we are. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought it was um, a fantastic effort from him. I've been a big fan of him um, up in the reserve grade and the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so yeah, great to see him finally come down to first grade down here and, um, show his worth. So very happy. Um, hopefully that means his good game is out of the way so he can have a shocker this week. Um, so that is the round. You, you yeah, got something else to say? Yeah. I still get his name mixed up cause he just makes me think of Paul Pierce, the basketball player. Yeah. Just so KPP. I, get, I get, I know that's why I'm, I'm going with the KPP cause I always mix the, the, the two P names up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the round. We'll go to our tips. Um, Richard had a nice decline. Um, yeah, getting, I forgot. Getting two. So I submitted my tips on Saturday, 
And yeah. I forgot to submit them and I missed out on three games and I would have got all those three games right. That's my disclaimer. Yeah, so you five would have got five. Five out of five is still not flash, but um, it's better than two. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Um, I can provide as, a screenshot if no one believes me. As I as I told you on the show last week, put your tips in now. Just do it. I've, we talk I've about who we the, pick. Yeah, I've already done mine this week. Thank you. So, um, leading the comp is ACT Hellcat still. Um, Andrew, he, he's on twenty six points. Um, Shuddy FC's on twenty three. Um, Rocking Horse Roads on seventeen and third, and then I'm at fourth with sixteen. Uh, Simon is one behind on fifteen and sixth place. Hammer is in seventh, and uh, Bjorn's eleventh, and Richie your twelfth. Jono and the Punisher appear to have quit because they only got one, and I think there was only one away win this week, so they uh, have quit. But that's fine. We'll continue to say that they're involved and they're just really uh, bad pickers. Yeah, I, I told you not to bring that up. Uh, I have to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm honest. Um, yeah, Simon said he did his 20 minutes before the show. See, that's smart. That's why Simon is where he is on the ladder and you're not, Richie. Yeah, so, fair enough. I'll cop that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good to see. It's still really tight. Um, you know, those guys at the top using their joker rounds early um, has got them the lead. But those of you who still got your jokers in the bag, you could do make some moves later on. So, Interesting. And I'm still in the hunt, which is all I care about. So we'll go into the ladder. Um, I think I gave you top eight last week, didn't I? You did. You yeah, did. so I'll take it. So in first place, the only undefeated team, the Cowboys. Then we've got the Roosters in second, the Raiders in third, Panthers fourth, Manly fifth, Parramatta sixth, the Dolphins seventh, and the Storm eight. And the bottom half of the table, the Tigers climb up to one of their favourite ladder positions, number nine. Um, Cronulla, Warriors, Canterbury Bulldogs, Newcastle Knights, Brisbane Broncos, like seeing them down there. Uh, St. George Illawarra Dragons, Gold Coast Titans, and South Sydney Rabbitohs. Yeah, now, as Simon said, the West Tigers are back in their correct place of ninth, yeah. which is good to see. Um, so it's still too early to say. Um, I think you see some teams in there like Cowboys and Ra Raiders and that it, they're good enough to stay around when those teams that you expect to climb the ladder start coming. I think mm. they're good. They're good enough to kind of hold. You know, I'm not saying at the end of the year Cowboys will be first place by any means, but you know, when you're loading these points early on, it could be hard to get you out of the eight by the end. Um, yeah. But then... What was it, round 11 last year? The Rabbitohs were first, and then they didn't even make the eight. So yep. um, it all depends. But, yeah, it's still too early to talk about. Um, Dragons are only two points out of Wooden Spoon territory, which is still good. Um, we, we, we still have a chance of my prediction. Um, so, yeah, that is the ladder. So we'll go to questions. Um, there were a few from other people first, so we'll go with them rather than our boring questions. No, I'll go with my question first, actually. <clears throat> so Cowboys, only undefeated team. You both, both of you guys said that um, basically you didn't expect them to be there or be the be the last undefeated team. Now, are they the real deal, or has the um, schedule just been really kind to them? Uh, if you like, I can even actually read out who they've played. Go on. I know okay, you just so want to hear yourself talk. It's fine. Um, they they uh, they beat the Dolphins eighteen forty three. They beat some the Knights twenty one twenty, and they beat the Dragons twenty four forty six. Those are all half teams, you know. They're, they're... Well, the, yeah, wow. Well, they're not a couple of no, those aren't. They're not. Well, uh, none of those three teams no. you expect to be top eight, right? They're all they're all bottom eight well, teams. The knights, the knights, I thought yeah. would be top eight out of the, one out of the three. Um, so I would have probably expected them to be two and one. I, I would have expected them to beat the dragons and dolphins and lose to the knights. Um, are they the real deal? It's too early to tell. Um, and yeah, Simon said he thinks the Dolphins are the toughest team out of those three. Yeah, so you just don't know. Um, you know, if you had asked me preseason at the end of three rounds with how many wins would the, the Rabbits have, I would have said two at worst. Um, so you just don't know, and it'll, they've just got to keep it in. You know, everyone's looking out for them now, which is another issue. Um, we've already talked about the amount of points they concede, you know, once they get to the um, those big teams, you know, they play the Panthers, the Storm, the Roosters, we'll see if they're real or not. I, 
I, I love that. Looking... The big teams. Does he mention? Doesn't even mention one of the teams we made the final last year. But anyway, go, go on, Richie. I'm yeah. just looking at my looking back at my tips, and I tipped them the first three weeks. So you expected? I, get, I, I guess I did expect them to be up here. But look, I kind of agree with you, Brad. I, the real test for them is when they come up against. They're coming up against the Broncos this week, but I think they're they're meeting the Broncos at the best possible time, injuries wise. Um, but yeah, once they start meeting Panthers and Roosters, we'll find out what they're really made of. So yeah, just, and, you know, so, so again, so they, they, okay, you say Broncos at the perfect time. Then they've got the Titans, Titans, Eels, Sharks, Panthers. So they could be going to that Panthers game with another four wins under the belt, and they could be. Yeah, um, they could even be uh, seven and zero, which would be uh, uh, impressive. Yeah. yeah, and I think they're going to be on the cusp of playing the Panthers either just with a returning Clary or without, yeah. um, which is a bit fortuitous for them as well. But, yeah, Richard had him in his predicted top eight, and I didn't. So I think that's probably the, the ground level of our expectations. <laughs> so, okay, question to the crowd then. So the one you asked me to ask me to, um, to start, this is just ridiculous, Nicholas says. Mitchell is the problem, lazy in attack and defence, hides behind the line, and then just pops up within the attacking 20 to score a try or two, a liability. Wow, Latrell Mitchell, a liability. Oh, always. Um, that's always been the issue with him. That's why I wanted you to pull it here, because I felt it was more of a discussion than just saying saying what he said there. Um, that is the... You, you can't, you can't criticise him. He's untouchable. As we said last week when he got in no trouble at all for his, his interview... And now he's the Rabbitohs have said they don't want him to be interviewed anymore because the journalists are racist towards him. Um, <laughs> and um, that's that's not even me joking, Paul. That is the serious no, quote. That is but, yeah, that, that's 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 farcical. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, yeah not yeah, racist. So, toward, yeah. There's a racist bias towards him. I think was the correct term. But um, I'm not. I don't want to I bring the race thing into it. No, don't, 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 because my laugh did me like I've never seen any of his interviews apart from the one where he decided to drop lots of swear words on TV. Yeah, Hence yeah, why, but that's, um, why, that's why I'm judging it from. But yeah, yeah, but like I think there was a, a discussion group on TV talking about it, saying like when you watch a Rabbitohs game and you watch the opposition scoring the try, the trail's never on the camera, which is really bad when you're the fullback that's showing his positionings off. And um, he, he does look lazy, and then he'll do magic stuff with the ball in hand, and you forget all the other stuff. It was It's kind of a more serious issue than the Walsh issue we had, Richie, where Walsh is one of the greatest players with the ball in hand. Yeah. He can't he couldn't tackle if he was playing 12-year-olds. Um, and that was his liability, but he made up for it on the attack. And now the Broncos, they make sure that hardly anyone – gets to where Reese has to do that. Mm. Um, so it's not as much of an issue. But Latrell, yeah, the people, the way the Rabbits are playing, people are always getting through, and Latrell just doesn't seem to be up. And um, every time he's criticised, everyone does come out and, you know, say you can't pick on him because he gets upset and things like that, which I, I get. I get from an emotional point of view, but... You know, he's getting paid the big bucks. His team's falling apart, and he needs to do something to come back. Um, but he's the one player they'll never drop. I'll be surprised if mm. they drop him, despite probably needing to. Um, but, yeah. Well, he's, just, he's, he's, he's like the top-paid player at that, that club, right? Well, he's um, their yeah. number one player. He's probably yeah, the yeah. highest paid as well. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not played um, Origin since 21. He's not played for Australia since 22, um, which shows that obviously the the selectors at the next level up don't rate him. Otherwise, he would be playing at the in those games, wouldn't he? So um, he he had some injuries, which didn't help yeah, with I Origin. Was, I think he was injured last year. Sure, but we're still <laughs> talking. He did was that's 22. Uh, well, it's two years of, of of missing out on Origin. Um, mm. So anyway, so just just some points there that yeah maybe it's yeah that's, that's something along those lines. Yeah, and Mark Roberts has said as well, there was a Facebook post that said, um, as a fullback, Latrell's averaged 100 running metres a game only um, two years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's yeah, a different kind is, of fullback, eh? He's not really he's a an lazy one. type one. Yeah, he's, he, a he's one that... He's a he's prop up the back, have an arrest. He, yeah, he chimes in when he chooses and, and 
more of a yeah he's got the great running game but he tries to be the ball player as well and that's probably one of his strongest points is his his pass selection and he gets a lot of trices he's not really a meter eater but I think the Rabbitohs problems probably more than just him he's part of the problem probably a little bit of coaching a little bit of uh, too much player power particularly with Latrell and probably Cody and, Walker yeah it's gonna say grandpa in, in 5-8 it's not helping either yeah they need they need less uh, players like that and more players like Cam Murray if they had hmm. five more Cam Murrays they'd be all right yeah so Nicholas, second other one was: um, if Reynolds gets injured, is Madden the man for the job, or does someone else need to come in? I would say Madden is if Reese Walsh and everyone was there as well. Taking Reese Walsh out of that equation, I'm not sure they've got anyone that can come in. Um, I think he'll do it. He'll do an all right job. He'll do a job. Yeah. He'll he'll do the job, but it's not like you're going to say, "Well, Reynolds is getting on a bit." We we could get rid of him now and do what the Rabbitohs did and say this young kid that we just dropped last week, he's the future. We'll get rid of Reynolds. I don't see the Broncos doing that with a guy like Madden. What What do you see? Okay, so you said earlier Adam Reynolds probably only has a, you know, not too long left in him. What do you see happening once he does go? Do you think Walsh does a luckier like transition into the halves? I think you could potentially see like a Walsh man halves. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say. You just don't know. They might lure someone, um, uh, another half from another club potentially in time. You just don't know. Or the next big thing might pop up um, in Penrith and get, you know, lured away. Um, I used to say like a, a Brad Schneider after his apprenticeship moves on. I don't know. It's It's such a hard prediction yeah. um but yeah i think madden will do the best he can which is a very sitting on the fence answer um mark just point out that new south the the um new south wales former coach rather had 17 players out of position and picking proper players in their positions good point on that one. yeah there were some interesting selection issues also to, to maybe play into um some of that side of things um yeah R robbie asked hey richie uh, have you got full 17 of fantasy this year which isn't playing fantasy, so no, he yeah. doesn't. No, my like Good I wonder. said, my my only NRL fantasy is the Warriors to win the comp. That's all. Yeah, yeah. And um, then uh, so Robbie also says, any news on an Anzac jersey? No clue. I don't think we're we're not. I don't think we're the only one. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, I think they'll probably wear if they wear a special jersey for Anzac Day, it'll probably be um, that heritage strip. And they might put a poppy on it or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but cool. I've heard uh, I've heard no news, which uh, it's not that far away. So I take it that it isn't it isn't happening. And uh, Brad can can on, on Members Day this uh, this weekend can check it to can find out for us. Um, that means I'd have to talk to people, Paul. Oh, well, that's that. true. Sorry, sorry. Um, Jacker, then why are the Warriors hookers not kicking at all? Lusick um, is a great kicking has a great kicking game. Yet seems to have been told to pass to, the, to halves to kick all game. It's kicking's cheating, Jacko. Real men don't <laughs> kick. What are we doing? Talking rugby union? Jeez, um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't mean, know. I guess it's not. Yeah. How it? about how about the guy that actually kicked when he played? <laughs> um, it's probably just more of a game plan thing. The mm -hmm. kicking for the Warriors is definitely very. Sean Johnson dominated. He, I would say, he'd have the best kicking game at our club. Uh, when Egan plays, I don't think he's he, he's probably a reluctant kicker, and he's definitely more of the crafty sort of passing, running dummy half. But um, I just think our game plan is most of the kicking to go through Sean Johnson. But we've seen a little bit more coming out of Metcalf. Um, yeah, he which he is good. Um, Egan came to the club with a good kicking game. Because I remember yeah. when they signed him, that was what I praised about it. I said, we finally got a hooker with a kicking game, and he's never kicked. <laughs> so, just, yeah, it just seems to be I not, think it's not a game part plan. of our game plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think they, yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess I, my only point on that would be, if you've got multiple options, it makes play, it makes your position think more. You can change pitches. But when you're, when you're generally kicking on, fit on, on fifth tackle anyway, um, mm -hmm. perhaps that, the, the uh, having the opportunity to guess, 
perhaps that's taken away from you. So unless you think about kicking early, then uh, that that'd be where I think you might throw your hooker in there, just just be, because it would um, it would throw throw the uh, the, the defence a, a surprise. But anyway, that's just mm -hmm. a thought. All right. So is that our last um, question from Mark there? Tua Picky uh, to be transformed into a Huntley Hurricane type player uh, could be great cover for all the spine. He says. Yeah. Yeah, he that. could be. Um, his nickname will be the Halfbreak King. No, um, he, he always has a half break. He, he hasn't got a full one yet. Um, but yeah, I think he, he has all the ability in the world. Um, he's currently, what, a fullback that played halves. Um, I don't think it would be much of a switch if you had him in there and go, shit, we need him in hooker for a second because something's happened, potentially. Um, yeah, I think it all depends on um, how long guys like Chan's in there are sticking around. If, mm. if Charles is going to be here, you know, another three, four years, that's what you'd want to do with Tang to keep him. Otherwise, in three three to four years, um, he might be gone um, to another club if you go, no, you're just fullback. Um, but, yeah, he, he's a good player. I, I love him to bits. It's a real shame that he, he's not playing this week. Yeah. Because I think was he, looking, he was getting confident. He was getting he was his confidence great. in. Yeah, he was looking really good up until up until the head knock and him having to leave the field. I thought he was he was going really well. We've got that second rate rugby union player playing fullback now. I don't know what's going on. The the death of the club. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that all the questions? That was all the questions. Yeah. Um, so our questions, Richie. Um, yeah. I'll go. I'll, I'll go with my one first because you've been talking about them all night. The rapids. Right. The rabbitos. Um, they seem to be at a crossroads right now. If you were in charge of the club, what's one thing you would do to turn things around? And I already said I have no idea what they should do to turn things around. <laughs> They're in a hole. Um, I tell you what, I think if if they get a few more results like the way they've been going, I'd probably start looking in a different direction coaching-wise. Um, yeah, I think... I think they've got cattle there to, to win games. We've seen it up until about round 10, round 11 last year. Yep. We saw a squad that looks very similar to what they've got, winning a lot of games. I definitely think they're feeling the loss of a couple of people, particularly um, Campbell Graham is a big one. If you put the Bunnies team out on the field this weekend with Whiten on one side and Campbell Graham on the other, that's starting to look a lot better. But... Um, yeah, one thing I would maybe do is start start looking recruitment wise at who you could bring in uh, halfback wise because um, they clearly don't have the faith in Ilias, but mm. they've brought in Dean Hawkins, but he's a young fella. He's obviously going to need time, so uh, maybe get on the you know get the recruitment team looking looking strongly at a a good solid seven. Because your seven's never going to be a dominant guy in that team because of who they've got in there, Latrell, Cody Walker. Um, but they need they need someone there that's going to do a job and someone they have faith in. I don't think they have that faith in Elias. Yeah, and uh, Jacko said he would hire Sam Burgess, kick Jason out the door, and uh, along with a couple of high profile players. Sam's um, yeah. actually being told he can't come back, um, not by the Rabbits. But Warrington, where he's coaching, they said under no circumstances are you breaking your contract and um, going back to the NRL. So that's off the table at the moment. If it was me right in charge right now, I would drop Latrell. Um, you're probably not going to win, but it sends a message. You know, everyone's going on. We just did for, it felt like 20 minutes that Latrell's untouchable. By dropping Latrell, it sends a message to him that you've got to be accountable and the rest of those team, the rest of the players going, well, if Latrell's going to get dropped, um, we've got to stick it up. Because dropping Lachlan means nothing. It's, as yeah. you just said, the, the seven's not that integral to their play due to Cody and Latrell. Um, and, yeah, I think Latrell, it would be a message. Would it work? I don't know. But I'm not a coach, hence why I'm here on Wednesdays. You, you bring up a good point, though, because, like I just said before, talking about the South that maybe they've got a player power issue with a couple mm. of those high profile players in their club. Dropping someone like Latrell would would put that fire out pretty quickly. 
and yeah, yeah put everybody on notice. Yeah, and your question to me. Uh, more around the rules, Brad. The obstruction rule. Do you think the obstruction rule as it is, um, take for example what happened in the Manly versus Eels game, do you think the rule is good, as good as it is? Uh, and do you feel there's too much potential for players to play for penalties? Now, with that in mind, you think to the Jackson Ford one a couple of weeks ago as well, where Jerome Hughes seems to just tackle him. Um, yeah, go. You got your tinfoil here? Because I got a conspiracy. Yeah, go on. All right. That, um, that obstruction play in Manly Eels wasn't an obstruction, but the bunker, when he was looking at it, he saw the blatant Ford pass afterwards and said, I can't rule on the forward pass, so I'm going to rule on the obstruction because this shouldn't have been a try. Um, so I think that's what happened um, because it clearly wasn't an obstruction. Um, I give more benefit of the doubt to the forward one than I did to this one. Yep. Um, this one definitely wasn't, but yeah, there was a forward pass afterwards, so I think that was the roundabout way of trying to even up the mistakes. Um Potentially, that's all conspiracy, obviously. But yeah, I the obstruction rule. No one's ever going to be happy. I, I think they're overcomplicating yeah. it. Um, so yeah, I would leave it as it is and just try to introduce some level of grey. It's not never black and white. So having a bit of reasoning behind the decisions. But yeah, I think I just think it was a stitch up. They saw a forward pass and went, we we can't. You know, we still remember the Warriors Broncos game. We can't let another four try pass go through, especially mm. in a game where that try could have been the difference. Like if they had won because of that try, where I mean, people say, "Well, there was a four try pass in there. What's going on?" You know. So mm. I don't well, know. I do That's really cons- answering it without answering it. I do love a good conspiracy. Yeah, I. Yeah, they they did try to make the rule a bit more black and white. But there is grey areas. I think maybe they just, when the bunker's looking at these things, um, really look a bit harder at what the defender's doing. Like, mm. case in point, the Jerome Hughes one. Um, he made a dis- defensive decision. You have that you have that tool in your arsenal to, to and when making the ruling. Mm. Look at it and say he made a defensive decision. At the moment, I think you're seeing players... Um, tackle the wrong person on purpose to try and get that penalty, so they're playing for the penalty, and yeah. the bunkers the bunker seems to be biting on that. Whereas, look at look at that situation and say he's made a defensive decision. You could, I don't know why they're they're not calling that more often. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, thanks for all the questions. Uh, it feels like that's the most questions we've done in a while. So um, enjoying it. So we'll go on to round four. Um, we'll start with the Warriors Knights game, um, kicking off on Easter Sunday at six o'clock. It's a it's a late Sunday game in New Zealand. I had to double check to make sure it wasn't four, but it is actually six. Um, you want to give us the rundown of the Warriors team, Matt? Yeah, you bet. So fullback this week with uh, Tainto Piggy <sighs> with his concussion. We've got Roger Tuivasa Sheik stepping in at fullback. Uh, the wingers remain the same: Dylan Watinez, Lesniak, Marcelo Montoya. The centres, Rocco Berry, and this one's much talked about. Adam Pompey gets his first game for the year. Halves stay the same. Luke Metcalf, Sean Johnson. Ford Pack is Adam Blake. Wade Egan's named. Hopefully he gets some ta- time this week. Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, Kurt Capewell, and Tohu Harris, captain. Interchange bench, Freddie Lussick. Uh, Maratania Kore's been named. Bunty Afua and Dylan Walker has also been named to return. So, um, yeah, looking good. Yeah, I don't mind the lineup. I said when it came out on Tuesday, I said uh, it's not a bad lineup. I would have liked to see um, Ali come into the centres. Me too. Um, yeah. in- instead of Pompey. Um, and there's been some discussions about, like, why, why Bunty instead of Jazz or Tom Ali. I don't mind Bunty there. I don't think Bunty's done anything wrong to get dropped. Jazz has just come back in, um, and I think I was discussing it with some people. I said, I'm looking at it. I'm trying to think Webster's a different cat, right? He has a different thinking process on his bench, and I think he's got two props on his bench. He had Tom and Bunty round the first few rounds. you got Tom, who's more of your get the ball and run it, and Bunty's more of your defensive, defensive. in the middle. 
Yeah. So I think he's looked at it again going, I want my running prop and I want my defending prop. So Murata replaces Tom. Bunty's a defending prop. He stays. Like me completely getting the wrong idea. That's how I'm reasoning with it. Um, oh, I, I agree. Dylan um, and Jacko said Tom for him as well. I prefer Tom. I think Tom's got more upside, but um, yeah, we're, we're just got to wait and see what, how it goes. Pompey's the same. Um, he, goes, Pompey, he goes quite well against the Knights, doesn't he? I think he's got a he does. record against them. And Pompey, as much as I've, I've bagged on him um, since the show started, um, last year he did play reasonably well by costing us a game in Napier. Um, and he does, when he's up against a top talent center, he goes another level. He, he seems yeah. to really up his game. So um, going up against the likes of Gagai and Best, uh, maybe throwing um, Ali out there isn't the wise one. And we're we're one and two, we're two and one or one and two, sorry. Um, so I think Webster's going for guys that have been there before, as opposed to you know unleashing everyone. And this Roger guy, um, he's apparently played fullback a little bit, so I think he'll be okay. Um, it'll be it'll be, it'll be exciting to see. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, very disappointed for Tain. Um, but yeah, it's going to be awesome watching Roger at fullback. Um, live in person so i'm looking forward to it um the knights though the knights have got a pretty good team too kaylin ponger at fullback uh the wings are um thomas jenkins and anari tuala dan gagai bradman best as their centers uh jack cogger and tyson gamble in the halves jacob saifidi phoenix crossland and daniel saifidi in the front row tyson frizzell and kaya pierce paul in the second row and um adam boyle mr elliot is lock <laughs> Um, potentially, maybe Millie is coming over. Um, then on the interchange, we've got Jaden Braley, Matt Croker, um, Jack Hetherington, and Brady Jones. So, um, kind of you expect that team. I think Jacko mentioned it a bit later. He thinks um, Cogger didn't go that well and he would prefer Hastings. I'm happy with Cogger because I think they are a harder team to beat with Hastings. Um, so, Hastings got f- five or six. Try assists in New South Wales Cup last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's going to be having a field day. It'll be like him playing in um, Super League again down in yeah. New South Wales Cup. Um, yeah, and Jagger said, Hi, Knights Harbs are hardly in a rough standard. We should win this game by quite a few. Yeah, the, the biggest issue is their centres, Kalen and the pack. Um, the Harbs I'm not worried about at all. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the Warriors should get this one, um, which is why I've picked them. Who have you picked? Yeah, I'm going Warriors. Home home ground advantage. I like our lineup. I think um, I'm hoping there's still some some skeletons in the closet for the Knights and Mount Smart from yeah. the finals final series last year. Uh, so we've we've got form there in this fixture. Um, yeah, going with Warriors. Yeah. So now we'll go to the rest of the round um, and go through our picks. So starting tomorrow night, we've got the Roosters and Panthers. I've gone Roosters. Um, I know we just talked about how the Panthers do well without Cleary. The Roosters have been humming, though. So I think the Roosters, this is their best shot at beating the Panthers, so I'm going for it. Yeah, I went Roosters as well. Yeah, i got to make moves on this tipping comp now that I'm just against you and Simon. Yeah. Um, uh, and just point out that yeah, Roosters are the favourites at $1.59. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be like what they did to the rabbits by any stretch. No, def- definitely not. But I think they should get the edge here. Um, then we've got Friday rabbits bulldogs. I've gone with the rabbits. They got to win at some point, so I'm going for them to beat the bulldogs. If any team they can beat, it has to be the bulldogs, surely. Yeah. And I don't. Right. I don't want them coming to New Zealand without a win yet. We've talked crap about them all night, but I've gone rabbits as well. <laughs> um, I won't be surprised. They are the, again the the, uh, the the favorites there. They they have to you know they have to stumble into a win at some point. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm going with it there. Um, next up, Broncos Cowboys. I've gone Cowboys. Um, yeah, no Reese. I know Reynolds is back, but no Reese, no Haas. Um, I think this is the best time again. Um, like the Roosters, best time for the Cowboys to get the Bronx. 
Yeah, uh, no Reese is a big one. Tristan Saylor's a very able replacement. Hmm. But this this fixture's always close, um, and I think no pain has no Reese Walsh is enough to swing it in Cowboys' favour. Yeah, first game on Saturday, uh, Dragons Manly. Yeah, I've gone I Manly. Just point out the Cowboys are also, even though they're favourites, dollar seventy nine are our favourites. Ah. Yeah, it's that Walsh factor. Um, yeah, so Saturday, Dragons Manly. Um, I've gone with Manly because I don't pick Dragons. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I went Manly as well. Um, Manly the short, Manly the shortest odds all week, all weekend, a dollar thirty four. Yeah, and Jacko said Sailor's a damn good player. Yeah, he is. not 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 um, rubbishing Tristan at all. Um, I just yeah. Think, yeah, I just think back to the Napier game last year where Walsh oh. and a few others went playing, and Tristan yeah, was a so, nightmare. Yeah, he he had a blinder. Yeah. Um, so next game on Saturday, Titans Dolphins. I've gone Dolphins. Um, I don't see the Titans getting their win um, this week. Yeah, Titans are trash this year. Dolphins. And the first game on Sunday was Warriors Knights, which we already talked about. We both picked the Warriors. Um, then the second game on Sunday is Sharks Raiders. I've gone with Sharks. It's going to be yeah. tight, but I think the Sharks, yeah. after losing to the Tigers, they're going to want to make a statement. Um, I went Sharks, but I, with no confidence, I think Canberra could could cause an upset there. But Sharks. If this was in Canberra, I would have gone Raiders. But yeah, at home I'm going Sharks. Um, mm. Then the last game of the round uh, on Easter Monday, Eels Tigers. I've gone Eels. Um, even without Mitch, um, I think you know. I don't want to say the Tigers were a one-hit wonder, but um, I think I think the Eels. Um, I think the Eels should get the Tigers. And Jacko's gone with the Raiders, saying the Sharks have too many injuries. Yeah, that's why you know, I was tempted by the Raiders. You're not getting um, in my head, Jacko. For the para, the para West game, I've submitted para. I could edit it. Um, I've, I've seen their team, and yeah, they're missing a couple of big players. You know what? Put me down for West. I'll edit that. All right. I've been blinded by the 30-odd 30, 30 points they scored <laughs> against the Sharks. I'm going to go with West. All okay, right. so, so that's the only one you got different. I'm taking out the Sharks Raiders game for the multi, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, no confidence. No confidence. Not after not after Jacko's comment. No. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, so we're only going for a six leg multi. Um, you watch. When and we although, get it right. it's at, although it's at Shark Park, you want to add another layer to that. I think Canberra's won five of their last seven games at Shark Park. Oh yeah, and Jacko said to be fair, he doesn't want to be in my head. No one does. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's that's the picks. Um, we and Simon said he's picked the Raiders himself. Yep, it's yeah, it could go either way, but uh, I'm I'm sticking to my guns. Um, we'll go with it. But yeah, uh, anything else you want to add to that, Paul, about the multi? How much? Uh, how so much yeah, are we losing this week? Twenty-seven dollars and ninety-eight cents that we won't get. Yeah, cool, <laughs> cool. One day, one day. Um, so that is it for the NRL for you, Jacko. Um, so we'll go into Super League quickly. Um, Challenge Cup was um, on over the weekend. There were no surprises when I look at all the results, um, with all the favourites winning with relative ease. Um, quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup will take place on the 12th to 14th of April. So I'll just run through these, Richie. Um, yeah. Hull KR bet Salford 40-0. St. Helens defeated Leeds 20-6. Wigan defeated Sheffield 44-18. Uddersfield defeated Hull FC 50-6. Lee defeated Featherston 26-14. Castleford defeated Batley 28-14. Warrington defeated London 42-0. And then Catalan defeated Halifax 40-4. So, um, yeah, not too many tight ones in there. Um, no, no. All, all and, as expected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, Simon's made a comment before I move on saying he does like how um, the Challenge Cup this year where they group the teams in the early stages who are not in the Super League in the pool stage situation. Yeah, so the Challenge Cup that just went by was like round six. It's been going constantly with every team that isn't in the Super League to get to that spot. So um, yeah, I like it. You kind of got the best of the rest coming in. It didn't help. 
um, looking at the scores, but it's, yeah, it's a good concept, I, I guess. Um, but yeah, this week in Super League for round six, we've got Castleford versus Leeds, Hull KR versus Hull FC, St. Helens versus Wigan, Warrington versus Catalans, Salford versus Lee, and London versus Uddersfield. So there's some big matches, you know, the, the Hulls are always a good clash. St. Helens and Wigan, Warrington and Catalans should be a, a, a boomer too. So um, should be some good games there um, to talk about next week briefly. Uh, anything else you want to add, Richie or Paul, before we go? Um, since we're going long. We are going long. Um, yeah, no, thanks for the chat, everyone. A lot of fun, as always. Up the was this weekend. All right, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight on The Standoff with Brad and Richie. For your weekly update on Rugby League, tune into our show next week at 8 p.m., here on Facebook or at your convenience on IR Radio or Spotify. Just remember to search for New Zealand Sport Radio. Cheers again for joining me, Richie, and thanks for all your help in the background, Paul. And good night, everyone.